so myself apur uh, i work for mintra uh, which is india's largest online fashion store uh, here i'm going to talk about uh, a data platform uh, which we have built which we, we have been building for past 7 months now and uh, usp for this uh, this is a cloud based it's quite scalable and it's uh, low cost okay uh, so how many of you have heard of mintra.com and how many of you have actually bought anything from it okay. so yes uh, mintra is uh, a fairly popular website uh, last i checked it is rank among top 50 website in uh, in india in electra.com but still uh, we are nowhere uh, near the scale of google or facebook or even amazon or ebay uh, so you should uh, take whatever i present with with that pinch of salt uh, my intended audience for this prime audience for this uh, are people working in small to medium startups who want to uh, foray into big data uh, but are in inhibited due to uh, lack of upfront investment or uh, without the thing that is going to be a, a quite a heck of a challenge to ma maintain such system or because they don't have the engineering bandwidth etc so okay uh, let's start yeah uh, so <laughs> why do we big, uh, need big data why do we uh, need to need to look for big data in company like our which, which is purely a business driven company why do we need to, to hunt elephants uh, we need it because we need to know what to sell how to sell whom to sell and how to sell okay uh, what to sell uh, we are uh, not a fmcg company or we are not an uh, electronics company uh, like in fmcg top 50 products will keep on selling this month next month next year probably even after 3 years uh, so the pattern is predict predictable you can predict that which which of the products we you have to focus for, upon which of the products we you don't have to focus upon also in electronics uh, if uh, apple release that iphone 5 sells 2 million handset on day 1 blackberry releases the trend hardly any buyers so we, again both of these were expected so you can predict which of the products are doing are going to do uh, good or not with a with a, a fair bit of confidence uh, things are not the same in uh, our industry in fashion industry where each product has a life cycle small life cycle of 3 to 6 months the product will be formed there it uh, some will kick off some some won't find find much buyers so we need to know which of the product products are doing uh, good we have to promote them which of the products are not doing it we have to liquidate them that to in a short span of time uh whom to sell we are not uh, a very niche market we are open to almost every uh, online user in india so there can be people uh We, who, who for whom budgetary constraint are, are, are paramount for uh, uh, and there can be people who are very fashion oriented they, they always wanted or they always want up season and new season product etc uh, also there can be people in northern part of india which uh, uh, who will do who will purchase winter wear in december or january but people sitting in bangalore might not need them so we have to know that uh, uh, whom we are serving also how is a uh, uh, very important part as well uh, because some of the products are such that which will which uh, which will seek uh, discount some of the products are, uh, are such that we, which we will have to promote as high fashion uh, if we invest uh, let's say 5 dollars on uh, doing facebook marketing or if we invest 5 dollars on google uh, on google marketing what what, what of uh, them is fetching us more returns so we need to know uh, the how part as well so these are some very high level uh, use cases let's look at some of the more concrete use cases list spread products based on ctr so uh, in mintra uh, currently we have more than 100000 active products and probably around 50000 products which are in stock of course not of not all of them can be displayed so what what should be the display order and a very good use case is uh, the the product which which have a high click through rate 
they are they are uh, generally attractive and uh, let's try to promote them so take impressions of all the products and whether they are clicked or buy purchase uh, added to cart etc uh, some products will find will turn out to be attractive and then others and give benefit to such products uh, now suppose i have to model it in a traditional way the rd bms way uh, it's fairly easy to mo uh, to model uh, so i'll have to do some uh, summations and uh, some mathematical operation like probably this is a this, uh, this is a fair representation of what query i'll write if i have to model this uh, this is an rdms problem is uh, more than 1000 products more than 500 million impression a day this is going to be difficult to scale uh, i'm not saying that uh, it can it can be done through rdms yes but uh, if you are you, using uh, commodity uh, software like mysql commodity hardware like ours then it's going to be, going to be difficult to scale some uh, some uh, let's look at another use case user segmentation uh, different users have different browsing patterns uh, let's segment them based on their history and provide them different experience so probably if a loyal customer come to my website uh, i would like to showcase him more than more products probably if a customer is coming for uh, uh, for the very first time i might like to showcase him the best sellers or i i might want to provide him an experience where buying is very easy because he or she might uh, is not familiar might not be familiar with us but if a repeat user of a, of a loyal user is coming then uh, we can have we can we can showcase him the new features again if i have to model this based on uh, rdbms uh, not very straight forward to mo to model but probably what i'll do i'll uh, go and see at which uh, depth uh, what is the depth traversed by each user how many users are coming to home page how many users are looking at products how many users are buying uh, are adding something to cart etc etc and uh, do a good buy operation and find out what uh, yes this user belongs here this user belongs here uh, challenges currently we are getting more than 1 million user uh, unique user a day and this number is going to uh, should increase and they are coming from different browsers uh, uh, also from different devices uh, from ipads from phones so collating them is going to be going to difficult and hence it's uh, difficult to scale another use case uh, uh, we have to recommend products which which you might like okay so a uh, uh, very basic thing can be computing scores of a product based on attributes and attributes for us can be uh, gender can be brand what kind of product it is what is the color of the product uh, whether it is a winter wear or a summer wear etc etc what is the cost range in in uh, of it computer score of users uh, based on the products they are browsing or they are purchasing and recommend them similar products so suppose uh, uh, you are uh, suppose you are always buying uh, always browsing t-shirts so uh, makes sense for me to refer, uh, recommend you t-shirts suppose you are always browsing for ethnic wear makes sense to recommend ethnic wear now uh, can i model this in a rdbms through sql probably yes uh, so we will have uh, 10 or 15 of attributes of, of any product uh, give different weightages to each and then give it a weightage accordingly for users uh, on depending on whether they are buying or, or, or they are buying any products looking at any product etc etc but it's very difficult to compute uh, uh, like, like these weightages are ever changing we, don't, uh, we can't predict this uh, what will be the weightage of any product we, these attributes are changing as well also with with so many users and so many products it's again uh, if i do a join of this then, then it's not easy to scale on uh, on a uh, commodity hardware okay. so we know that uh, yes uh, depending on use such use cases uh, we need to look out of the box and probably a big data is a solution for us uh, but uh, being a business driven company uh, there are constraints there are constraints like development has to be fast paced it has, we have to show tangible results the budget is limited engineering bandwidth is low and most of these are the same which edward talked about in his uh, keynote speech as well uh, because a business wants to move fast they don't have patience 
if i say uh, if i say them yes i am building on a platform which will be ready by 2015 and it will solve each and every use case in the world i say good enough but we are not an r and d firm uh, so we have to uh, time box the, the the development cycle we have to say that yes we will provide you results in two months or three months uh, uh, for the first version and then probably have every alternate week okay uh, also bandwidth is typically low in uh, startups uh, like for example our platform was built by two engineers uh, most or most of the most of the startups go through uh, such problems such constraints okay so what will be the design goals if i have to de design uh, design keeping such use cases and such uh, constraint my solution should be able to scale up and down this is non negotiable uh, because on day one the data volume which i will receive is going to be very low uh, the use cases which i'll be catering to uh, will be fairly simple so my solution would uh, uh, would be simple but as and when we grow the data volume will keep on increasing people will will, uh, will ask start asking more and more uh, difficult questions uh, so complexity will increase so the scale will uh, should increase also there will be some use some cases when we want to compute uh, not one day uh, worth of data but probably a year worth or probably a, a quarter worth of data so uh, in such case, such cases the solution will go through a, a spike so if my solution is not able to handle both both the ups and downs then it's uh, not going to solve a lot of <laughs> lot of business problems uh, i should uh, again record data now ask question later this should be philosophy for people or all the people working on big data because if you are saying that yes uh, i'll start recording these 10 data points or these 100 data points then probably you are missing out on something which might prove beneficial uh, tomorrow or next quarter or next year you should uh, we should be greedy while recording a data probably there probably some of some other data points will never uh, never be used but still we should be greedy uh, and that's why we have to cater to a generic data model again uh, why people have moved away from rdbms to things like uh, no sql storages to uh, document storages to uh, storages with, with have, which have unlimited unlimited columns is because of this because they want to cater to generic data model we need to segregate reads from writes uh, there are uh, many many solutions uh, in fact the one which i worked on uh, earlier uh, was based on mongodb that has a uh, single point for both writing and reading now if i if my solution has to scale up then uh, sometimes it sometimes it will very very uh, read heavy and in that cases write can get blocked uh, which which is a uh, uh, big big bottleneck so segregating reads uh, from writes is a uh, design goal for us it should have a low running cost of course it should have a low maintenance overhead of course Uh, so most of the most of these things hints towards cloud computing, towards moving to cloud. And let's uh, quickly go through some of the pros and cons of cloud. Uh, and most of them are uh, are general opinion. Uh, people can argue both for and against each of them, but it's, but uh, the pros and cons which I'm going to list are general sentiments only. So there is uh, no set of cost. Pay as you use. Scaling is definitely easy. And we and we have managed services. and because because we have to have low running cost because we have to have low ma uh, maintenance overhead because we have to cater to uh, faster development cycle these pros helps of course there are cons one of the uh, prime cons is performance uh, is not as compared to uh, uh, what is there in physical data center uh, but that uh, and, and this solution which we are building is for essentially batch processing uh, it has a real time component as well but uh, i'm not going to talk about that in this in this meeting so uh, that's because it's a batch processing system that's a performance is not of paramount importance it, it it is important but not of paramount importance uh, reliability yeah, yes even all the cloud cloud providers uh, themselves say that reliability is low and we have to uh, you have the developers have to build for failure very much security uh, people say that data security is a hazard uh, yes uh, and now there are many 
solution coming across uh, uh, to answer this but still that is the security is not uh, as much as, uh, as it is in your physical data centers control because lot of things are hidden from you uh, they, uh, you don't have a very grand, very low level control uh, uh, but again it's, we are we are working at a high level so control is not not of paramount importance again okay so let's look at uh, how how will a very big very basic data system, big data system look like it should have a data accumulation layer it should have a storage layer and it should have a data crunching layer a more mature uh, system uh, will have many more layers probably a proper scheduler layer probably a very good monitoring layer uh, a layer for uh, exporting and importing data from your traditional systems but to begin with you uh, need these three layers uh, and what what are the characteristics of uh, this the accumulation one it has to be highly available if it's not available then you might miss out on some data which you don't want to it should have low latency it's very low, low latency else other systems uh, might not want to talk to this and it should it should be agnostic of the storage which we are which is going to be used so there can be different storages and probably uh, the no sql movement uh, now has what, 20 30 different different storages so so if the accumulation layer says that i can cater to only one storage then then it is not solving the purpose tomorrow you might want to move uh, to another storage uh, uh, and and this will become bottleneck storage it has to be highly highly reliable again non negotiable uh, because we we are saying that we are working on data if uh, we cannot afford to lose any data it has to uh, got to have huge capacity again non negotiable uh, because as and when you increase uh, your data will keep on increasing uh, and uh, you don't want to discard old data you don't want to archive them that's why uh, the capacity should be huge and you should cater to any data model you should cater to relational model you should cater to non relational model documental model etc etc and it has to be cheap if it's not cheap then uh, some probably probably your cfo go is going to knock on your door and say that yes cut cut down this data we don't we don't want this <laughs> it has to be cheap uh, data crunching uh, yeah it should scale up and down uh, fairly straightforward uh, it should be essentially distributed as there there might be cases when uh, you can't scale up and it should be very easy to use uh, because uh, generally you, while developing such a platform you will be done by uh, first sec first and second layer uh, in some time and then crunching will happen day in day out people will ask uh, start asking diff more and more difficult questions so if uh, it's not very easy to use then uh, then <laughs> then again developer uh, is the person who will suffer okay so keeping in mind such constraint and such uh, design goals uh, what is the architecture which we used okay uh, yeah uh, this is the high level architecture for us uh, for our system uh, we are receiving request uh, from st uh, over http uh, the requests uh, are uh, particular uh, are a post request and the data is coming as json in post params this is writing uh, a web server is running which is based on finagle which is catering to this data this and writing into kafka uh, i'll uh, then a uh, batch job is running every 5 minutes to transfer this this uh, event from kafka to s3 and we are running uh, emr on base on top of that i'll go go through each and every layer why http uh, so there are solutions uh, like scribe flume etc which uh, which uh, captures lo log in real time from uh, from your web server from your application servers also some sometimes it's easier to transmit log uh, at at a, uh, a small frequency let's say every 15 minutes or every hour into your ev eventual storage but the problem happens uh, if you are, you are using let's say 50 servers to cater to uh, your your website and each of uh, and they might uh, lie on different data center they might be on different uh, oss uh, so ensuring that uh, such things uh, such continuous things like flume or uh, scribe works is uh, is a bit difficult uh, compared that to 
uh, HTTP request, which is which is every every uh, website these days makes tens or hundreds of uh, web services calls. So that is very easy easy to maintain, very easy to code for the other system, very easy to maintain uh, at our end. Uh, things like uh, high availability and reliability again comes with them. And also uh, we want to capture some data from uh, from our application servers and some data directly from the browsers. If we are uh, if we are collecting data through log files, then probably we have to have a different endpoint where our, our browsers can send data. Okay. That's why we uh, uh, we went ahead with HTTP request. Uh, the web server for us, uh, uh, we didn't use uh, things like Tomcat or Nginx, etc. Et because uh, because we wanted uh, wanted to have uh, very high performance, uh, and, and the functionality is pretty limited. Uh, we went ahead with uh, Finagle, which is uh, open source technology provided by Twitter. Uh, it, it, it's, it can be used in, uh, in building very high concurrent servers. It, uh, it, uh, it is built on top of NetT. It supports asynchronous operations. That's why your, request, your latency will be always less. It's very flexible. Uh, Twitter is using it as app server, as uh, load balancer, as web server, etc. So it's it's very uh, very flexible and it's easy to use as well. Uh, in next slide, I'm in next to next slide, I'm going to uh, show you one line of code which will say that yes, how easy it can be. Uh, for uh, the uh, we are we are using Kafka for uh, for the this uh, event aggregation. Uh, Kafka uh, rather Apache Kafka. Uh, it's again an open source uh, tool um, being developed by LinkedIn. Uh, it it is a persistent queue. It is distributed. Uh, it can handle very high throughput. Uh, they have uh, uh, tested it beyond 200,000 requests uh, per, per second. Uh, it ha it can subscribe to mul uh, it can have multiple subscribers. So and so you can fork out one real time uh, processing engine. Based uh, from this, uh, and one batch processing engine based on this, uh, you can segregate events based on uh, based on their properties. So this, so if if you are not interested in listening to some kind of event, then you can uh, then the consumers can uh, very well discard that. It's written in uh, Scala, uh, but still it beats technologies like Zero MQ or Rabbit MQ, which are built on uh, C and Erlang. Uh, reason being, it's very effectively uses things like uh, page cache. Uh, it it doesn't, doesn't create intermediate objects. That's why GC never kicks in. Uh, so the, the performance is very predictable. Uh, we, uh, also, uh, Kafka is distributed because, because it's used as zookeeper uh, to maintain that, uh, we, uh, that where all the uh, are the servers running? Where are the producer? Where are the consumers for that? Zookeeper has uh, a, a distributed configuration management uh, system. Uh, Apache Zookeeper. Uh, it it has become sort of de facto configuration management system in uh, uh, in technologies like Hadoop. Uh, okay. uh, so we uh, and Kafka has a very strong uh, relationship with this. So we we use Zookeeper. Uh, our eventual storage uh, is Amazon S3. Amazon is a uh, simple storage service. Uh, it, it comes with practically infinite capacity. I don't know how many zettabytes of storage this do, do they support, but for an end user, it's, it's infinite. Uh, it, ha it comes with very high durability, very high reliability, so uh, there is very, very remote chance of, of any event getting, uh, any data getting lost, any event getting lost. It has flat file storage. That's why you can cater to any uh, data model, uh, and it is it's cheap. It's much cheaper than if uh, than your hard disk. So, so uh, for us, S3 was the storage. Uh, between S3, uh, between Kafka to S3, we wrote a layer uh, called consumer. Uh, uh, so the way Kafka works, it it keeps everything. Uh, on disk, and there can be consumers listening to that, and consume, and it won't be like 
your normal GMS consumer or your uh, normal AMQP consumer which, which are reading message by message, uh, it will read messages in bulk. Uh, 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 so, for us, the con uh, this intermediate layer Kafka can be horizontally scaled. The eventual storage S3 is definitely scalable. So, the int and, uh, this layer ha also ha should scale horizontally and that is why we built a layer uh, Hadoop based layer uh, which, which can scale uh, as and when we need. So, data is there in S3 and what we are running to, uh, to crush that data uh, that is uh, EMR, it is uh, elastic map reduce service provided by Amazon. Uh, it is very easy to scale up and down, probably you have to just try, just fill in some uh, config file to say that I, I need 10 server instead of 20 uh, or I need 100 server instead of 10. Uh, again, it is pay as you use, so it would not burn your pocket if you are not running anything. This this is uh, this is in nutshell the architecture which we are using, and let's look at what what are the uh, the numbers which uh, we have been able to address. Currently, we are getting close to 20 million event events every day. They correspond to close to 800 million data points, uh, and 25 GB. This uh, 25 GB of data is getting added daily. We are running close to 100 jobs a day. And the biggest job has a footprint of uh, of hundred days or so. It comes to around two billion events. The cost, uh, as I said, that cost was uh, one of the criteria. Currently, we are paying close to thirty five dollar daily, uh, which which is like thousand uh, dollar a month. Uh, it's not that cheap, but it's still, had I had we developed this in, this in on some physical hardware, then. Uh, uh, the cost would have been at least three times uh, of this. Also, we can shut down it any time. Uh, if we, do, we are not interested uh, in extracting any data, we will say that uh, uh, the trends which we have analyzed so far give such a good direction, then we can cut down the jobs part completely. So, the, so the study cost will be close to twenty dollars a day. What are the key learnings from this project? Uh, yeah, I was talking about Finagle is very easy to use. You can literally code in English. So, this is this is code taken from one of the uh, live server. My service handles exception and then records in Kafka and then respond. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, again I have talked about Kafka uh, previously. Uh, so, generally while evaluating any uh, any uh, system we say that uh, what what is the language in which it is written in and generally we say that uh, those written in C or along will be more performant, uh, but Kafka is an exception. I will encourage everybody, uh, everybody, anybody who is interested in building a scalable solution to at least look at the design discussion uh, on Apache Kafka website uh, and they, they are very detailed, they, are, they talk about, uh, about how they have maintained performance, how they have maintained scalability without, without uh, Without making their development developers suffer <laughs> in writing some some languages which are which are very difficult to deal with. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, while build, while working on data, we we are always uh, conscious about the fact that how we'll extract uh, the data and say that those those data sets which we provide secondary or tertiary indexes are easier. That's because we can uh, query on them. Yes, uh, definitely that's the case. But still, you can search without index. Uh, this is typically how we arrange our data in S3. So uh, the bucket name, uh, then the event name, and then segregated by year, month, day, hour, and minute. Uh, so if I, if uh, we have to look at any data, it's essentially going to uh, the data point only. Uh, so it won't be like your MySQL query, but it's still it's, uh, you can extract data in, in very less time. Uh, EMR cluster, the elastic map reduce cluster, uh, uh, an advice to anybody who is thinking about that. Uh, uh, the, it, it, it's very easy to start, but, but also if you are not monitoring it well, then, then it can, uh, it won't be cheap because typically all the, uh, all the pricing are at an hourly level. So, if your job is running for one hour, 
uh, for one minute. Still, you will pay for uh, for one hour's worth of uh, price. If your job is running, let's say one hour, one minute, then you will pay for two hours. So uh, you should segregate your load. You should have some uh, ever running clusters uh, where uh, and decide that where to where to submit my job to. Also, uh, EMR, uh, Amazon has uh, has this fund of uh, spot instances. You should we should uh, use that effectively. Uh, yeah, M1 is small or not is small. All, uh, it, so all the uh, architecture which we saw in previous slide, all of them uses M1 is small, and so far we are working fine. I've been a fan of Oak and Grub for a long time, but this project has really taught me this because because sometimes you uh, you general just want to have a very basic uh, knowledge about what is coming and. Or can Grip can help you a lot in that. And a Apache mailing list. Sir. So this is me with a, before I started uh, working on this project. Then I pulled each and my, each and every strand of my hair, <laughs> and also the beard. Uh, yeah, uh, this is my request to Apache. Uh, some of the finest engineers in world, uh, world work for you. Please, please, please make your mailing list more usable. And they are very difficult to nav navigate. They are very, very difficult to search. Please take some inspiration from Stack Overflow or Google Group to make it more usable. Yeah, so with this, uh, well in time, uh, I've come to the website. We are hiring. Uh, this is the email you might want to uh, forward your CV to. <laughs> okay, questions? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, S3 is the eventual storage. Yeah, the question was, we are using S3 for storage. Uh, it's, real, it's definitely reliable, uh, but the write for performance are slow. So how to deal with it? Uh, we are not using S3 as a streaming mode, as a, a streaming endpoint. We are writing everything to uh, in Kafka broker first, uh, and every five minutes the, the job kicks in, which, which is transmitting to S3. So that's why S3 is not, not a bottleneck for us. And the uh, real-time analytics which we are doing, that is not done on S3, that is done directly through Kafka brokers. Only the batch processing happens on, uh, on uh, through S3 and for that probably a five minutes or a 10 minutes or even an hour latency is good enough. Yeah, the, 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 these Kafka are EBS back. Hello. How many Kafka servers you are using? Uh, three. Three. And uh, uh, can you give detail about uh, how many uh, EMR servers are being used? Okay. So uh, EMR servers dip, uh, are dif for different use cases. They are different servers. Uh, like I said, there are some jobs which are uh, hourly. Some jobs are which are uh, daily. So our daily daily cluster is, is a ten node cluster currently. Uh, and we also keep changing, keep tuning it based on how much uh, time and uh, different jobs are running. So, so let's say uh, if some jobs are taking, uh, if uh, let's say my whole day quota gets over in two hours, uh, fifteen minutes, then probably I'll, I'll increase the capacity by ten percent to get, get it completed in two hours. Probably if I, if it's comp taking uh, two hours forty-five minutes or three hours forty-five minutes, then I'll decrease the uh, the number of instances so that the early boundaries uh, are stretched and we save on cost. Okay, and uh, what is the memory of one node? This, this are, M1 is small, uh, 624 MB. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, okay, one more thing. Do you use uh, uh, personalization based upon user browsing history? Pardon? A personalization based upon user browsing history? Yeah, the, uh, that's very much in, uh, in pipeline. Uh, the analytics part for that is almost over. Uh, now it now it's uh, come to the website team to how to how to uh, personalize that. Okay. So that uh, probably in next three to four months, uh, if you browse on Minter.com, then then you will see. How do you compare uh, your architecture to Lambda architecture? Suppose uh, I guess you heard of it. I'm not aware of that. Okay. Fine. Huh. Huh. 
Oh, hi. Uh, sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Uh, actually, there's a there's a queue here and a lot of people are asking questions they're not getting to ask. So if we can just follow the pattern, then also the mic gets recorded, that's all. So let wait for a mic to come to you and then talk. Is that okay? Sorry. So how are you managing your EMR jobs right now? Because AWS doesn't provide you any job settler or something, right? Yeah, Karan. Uh, we have written a custom Java code for triggering the jobs, for finding out which all which is the appropriate cluster to fire to. A monitoring part is currently something which we are working on. Uh, we have talked with AWS people and a couple of things they have suggested. Uh, I often don't remember the name. Uh, one one is being developed by Yelp. One is uh, one was developed by Yelp and another from uh, Netflix. Uh, if I, I I'll try to remember the uh, and try to look in the, my notes. Uh, I, I'm here all day. If you uh, if you're here, then I can tell you what. So, but still, we have not evaluated them. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how are you managing historical data? Does it also remain in S3? Or yeah, it use... also remain in S3. Yeah. Something which okay. I forgot to mention here. Uh, yeah. So you can see uh, the EMRs are taking input and again writing it back, it back to S3. Sure. So uh, the output of all the jobs are in S3. That's why we don't recompute. Let's say. I have to get 15 days uh, worth of pattern and probably for some extreme use case I might have to recompute but uh, typically it's not the case. Sure. So are you also thinking about Amazon Glacier for your historical data here? Uh, Glacier doesn't solve the problem because Glacier is write once and read never. Uh, you might want to uh, use use it for things like tape backups which, yeah. which you are, you are there is very low probability of yeah, I mean, your historical data. You can move back to S3 in case you want to re-aggregate the data. Uh, right? so. Yeah, uh, that that has its own cost involved. Uh, to be fair, uh, we didn't evaluate what what would the cost if suppose I have to pull out 10, 10 days data from Glacier to S3. Sure. Uh, but again, again, Glacier uh, is cheap, uh, but compared to S3, it's around twenty percent cheaper. Sure. Uh, we didn't. Find a, a much value. I, mean, I was just thinking, like you have historical data for which you already have aggregation done, so you don't need the real data to be in S3, and you can move and, it to uh, because you don't know which kind of aggregation you uh, you want. Currently, we are running uh, some ten kinds of jobs. Tomorrow, we might we might need to run eleventh job for which raw data is required. Sure. So uh, and 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 these new jobs are are keeping uh, keep coming in every. We got every every fifteen days, so we okay. we can we we can't keep the uh, them them in Glacier. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, Parwal, can you give me an example of yeah yeah when you said the performance will be low uh -huh. on the con side for the cloud computing? Can you give me a specific example you have experienced where the performance was an issue? Uh, if you keep if you run MySQL instances uh, on EC2, not using the RDS. If you run my, I, I, I am not sure with RDS because I've never worked with it. But if you run MySQL instances on uh, on EC2 and similar config on physical data center, uh, at least what I have seen, uh, physical data center provides you, physical boxes provides you better results. Also, this uh, uh, the earlier earlier uh, this architecture when this architecture was not there, uh, it was a one box architecture which had MongoDB. Which was both the reader and the writer, uh, and there we were using EBS as a backend. It's around uh, six seven months back. At that time, at that time, provision throughput wasn't there in EBS. So, if if your traffic increases, uh, then writes become slow, and and we have faced problem when where uh, the EBS became in, uh, unresponsive for for short duration for thirty seconds. Uh, but unfortunately, those thirty second those thirty second calls the system to go down. The MongoDB system go, to go down. Right. Uh, just wanted to ask you. Uh, it's like uh, you're using. I, I can't. See. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I mean, you're using Kafka, hmm. and then you're going ahead to uh, storing in S3. So this looks like a good candidate for real time as well. Hmm. So why not Storm and why? Yeah. Hive. Uh, Storm. We, in fact, the real-time uh, uh, analytics which we are working on is using Storm. For uh, for Storm, needs some input input uh, where to get the, the data from, and for that, uh, it's listening to these brokers. The, we are using the Kafka Spout for Storm, and okay. Storm uh, 
Kafka export is uh, is very clean. Uh, I think probably uh, the two most popular export for Storm are the Kestrel Storm and the Kafka export. But it's a challenge to scale down with Storm, right? Yeah, it will be a challenge. Uh, so far, that is in POC mode only. So probably I'm uh, I, I won't be able to answer uh, the scale up and scale down questions. Uh, hi. Um, uh, when you say real time uh, using Kafka, what is the seconds you are talking? How real is real time? Around three four three four second delay. Thank you. That's in Kafka, uh, in Kafka, you can tune when to write. Uh, so again, it's based on number of events or number of seconds. And I guess we have kept it as uh, what, thousand events or something. I, it's not very high, so so typically. It's that's all uh, we have time for today. Uh, please catch up with Apura uh, outside. Thank you. Also, just in case you are uh, thinking of uh, developing something, though we are not a consultancy provider, but uh, you can definitely contact me. I'll, I'll be able to, I, I'll be happy to provide you any inputs which uh, uh, can help you. Okay.